Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are talking all about chores. First, we're going to go over the five steps that you need to take to get your kids to do chores willingly. Then I'm going to show you guys the hack that I accidentally stumbled upon when I was trying to figure out how to micromanage the chore process less and get my kids to take more ownership of their chores. And last, I am going to show you exactly what is on my seven-year-olds and my four-year-olds morning and evening routines. And their routine checklists include all of their chores. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I am Cassie and I make videos and I blog all about making mom life nice and easy for you. So if that sounds like something you would like to hear more about, please subscribe down below and be sure to hit that bell so you can get notified when I post new videos. And just like always, I will leave timestamps in the description down below if you want to jump around in this video to the parts that you are most interested in seeing. All right, let's go ahead and dig into the five ways to get chores done more easily at your house. The first thing that you want to do is you want to get them started with chores basically as soon as they are able to help. And they're able to help a lot younger than we think they are. So my girls started chores around the time when they could walk. And whenever I would be doing a chore, they would be somewhere close by and I would hand them a little rag and have them help, even though it wasn't super helpful at the time, it just got them into the habit of doing chores when I did. But don't worry if your kids are older, it is never too late to start. Watch this video, take in everything you can, write out some checklists for your kids, and I have some other videos that can help you in doing that. And get started tomorrow if you can, or even today if you are watching this early enough in the day. So just start as soon as you possibly can, and that just helps the kids learn as soon as possible that chores are something that we do in our house. The second thing you want to do is something I already mentioned, and you want to do chores with them. I was actually talking with a friend recently who grew up on a farm and has a very good work ethic. And he was saying that he always remembers his parents working very hard right alongside them. Or if it wasn't right alongside them, it was all of them working somewhere on the farm together. And it was very much a team effort. Now I've always tried to do this with my kids when they are doing chores, I am doing chores as well. But I did realize as we were talking with this friend that sometimes with modern technology, some of the work parents are doing is kind of lost in translation for lack of a better term. And I'll tell you a little story to explain that. The other week, my girls and I processed about 75 pounds of peaches and we were doing it all together, working hard. And I had told the girls that if we got it all done that day, I would make a peach cobbler. So as we were all working, I got out my phone and I started surfing for recipes on my phone, but I hadn't told the girls that that's what I was doing. And we've really been working with my oldest daughter, especially on focusing on her task at hand. So she looked over, she saw me on my phone and she goes, mommy, remember to focus. And I realized that it just looked like I was sitting there scrolling mindlessly on my phone or texting somebody. And I had to let her know, oh, I am focusing. I am still working on the task at hand, but it doesn't look like it. So that little situation really reminded me that sometimes if parents are working, but they are sitting at a computer or something like that, it may not feel like we are working with the children. So we just need to be aware of that and make sure we're communicating to them if we are working in that way and not be afraid to roll up our sleeves and get dirty doing the chores that we're expecting them to do when they are doing them. The third thing you need to do is you need to raise your expectations. Often we have very low expectations of our own children and what they are capable of. But again, when we were talking with this friend who was raised on a farm, I was realizing that kids can do quite a bit more than we expect of them, especially in this day and age. When we all were growing up, we probably had quite a few more chores than our kids have, and we did them. We did them just fine. But now kids are really good at seeming like they can't work very hard, even though they're very capable of it. And I have found for my kids, every time I raise my expectations, my kids rise to the challenge. And I've never found a time when they can't do what I ask of them when I raise that bar. So I've kind of made a habit of reevaluating their checklists and their chore lists at every birthday. Now, I don't give them their new chores on their birthday, but within a week or two of their birthday, they know that they'll be getting some new responsibilities because they're older and we need their help around the house. 
The fourth thing you want to do is you want to write down their chores and put it into some sort of checklist form. Now my kids' checklists look like this, and I show you in other videos how I come up with their checklists and how to create them for your own kids. So I will link those videos in the description down below, and I'll go through exactly what's on these later in this video. But you can do this on a plain piece of paper and just make it so that they can mark it off every day. Now, what my husband did very geniusly as I was printing a bunch of these off last time, he said, why don't we just laminate it? And then they can use a dry erase marker to mark it off. And that has been amazing. So we just bought some laminating paper. He laminated both sides so that nothing was wearing. And then I wrote their lists in Sharpie and they mark it off in dry erase. So each week, I just use this stuff that you can get at the dollar store called Awesome, and I spray off and I wipe down the old check marks. And anytime that I need to redo the part that's been done in Sharpie, I just use a magic eraser and a little elbow grease, and that can come off if I do need to adjust their checklist as well. And then I also put their names here. I have a little sticky note because I try to keep their names private, but. Um, you can write their name at the top. Sometimes they've even doodled around with the dry erase markers and just made it fun and their own. So I recommend having a checklist of some sort. If you want your kids to look like this, I do have these on my website that you can purchase. And the fifth thing that you want to do is you want to make it a habit. So what you'll see when we go over these checklists in a few minutes is I made their chores just part of their morning routine that they're going to do every single day and part of their evening routine that they're going to do every single day. So when they get up, doing their chore is just kind of automatic. I've recently been reading a book that I've wanted to read for a long time and had a lot of people recommend to me called The Power of Habit. And it's fascinating how much a habit can change your life either for good or for not so good. So it's really important to get your kids developing these healthy, good habits, like making their bed in the morning as early as they can. And both of my kids for that chore were able to do it pretty much on their own right around three. At their third birthday, I started teaching them how to do it and it really wasn't long before they were able to do it by themselves. And that just goes for a lot of things. If it's a habit for you to clean your kitchen after the meal, then you don't have to think about it and it's not a drudgery, it's just something you do. So those habits that you create for your children now will help them out in the long term with how they keep their house clean and all kinds of things like that as they are adults. So now I'm going to tell you all how I stumbled into this awesome parenting hack for getting your kids to take ownership of their chore list. About a year ago when I found out I was pregnant, I decided I really wanted my kids' checklists to be a habit by the time the baby came. And I started being very vigilant about making sure we did this every single day, no exceptions, so that they were prepared. And when I was busy with the baby, I wouldn't have to micromanage them doing their checklists as well. But even after months of this, after they knew their checklist by heart, I still had to start them every single morning and often we would have to remind them during their checklist, have you finished your checklist? Oh no, I haven't. Then why are you playing? Well, I, I got distracted and there was just something that was missing from the process that was making it their thing. It was still mine and my husband's preference to get the checklist done and they really didn't care whether it was done or not. So after my son was born, actually, I had magic erasered everything off of these checklists and I had been sitting there thinking, how can I make this theirs? How can I make it so that they take ownership of this? So the first thing that I did was I had grouped some things together and instead of grouping things together, like get dressed and put pajamas away, I separated those out onto their own line so that they could check each thing off individually. And my oldest daughter noticed it right away. She came and she told me, mom, it is so much easier to follow my checklist now that they're separate. And even though to me, I was thinking a shorter looking list might make it seem easier, it's actually much easier for kids if you detail everything out individually. 
Now you still don't wanna make it too long and tedious for them, but this way they can check things off as they do it instead of trying to do two or three or four things before they can do that check mark. And then the second thing that I did, and like I said, this came to me totally by accident. I figured let's try it and see if it works and if it doesn't, oh well, we're no worse off. But I added this bonus line. I don't know if you can see it or if it's focusing on that, but I added a bonus line here after the morning and a bonus line here after the evening. And I did that to both of their checklists. Now the bonus line can only get a check mark in it when every single other line on that line, either the morning or the evening, has had a check. And when they get a check mark in their bonus section, they get a bonus for the day. Now the bonuses in our house aren't anything super fancy. And I think that is important when you are choosing your bonuses. You don't want it to be things that aren't sustainable. Like if you're going to Disneyland or something like that, or going out to eat, you can't do that every single day and every single night. And that means that your kids just won't do their checklists when the bonuses aren't as big as the other ones. So you want them to be things that are simple that you can do on a daily basis. But I've also found it's really good to give them choices in what their bonuses are. So I keep a list of the bonus options for that week on my refrigerator and they can look at that and decide what they want their bonus to be after they get it checked off. Some bonus ideas that we have used in our house that have been very popular are getting to stay up 15 minutes after bedtime. And yes, if only one of them gets the bonus, only one of them gets to stay up 15 minutes later. I will start my timer and say, what do you wanna do with your bonus time? And sometimes they want to read a book, sometimes they wanna play a little game, or sometimes they just wanna sit and talk with me or my husband without anyone else around or any other distractions. So that is definitely a favorite for our kids. Another favorite is getting to chew a piece of gum, which doesn't seem like a big thing, but in our house, our kids aren't allowed to just chew gum whenever. We typically will say we have to offer it to you or something that you can get you know, at church or something like that. There's something that makes it a little bit more special. But if they get a bonus, they can have it whenever they want that day, which is very exciting to them. Another bonus option is going to the park. And one day I actually woke up around 7 a.m. to feed the baby and both of the girls had done their checklist and they said, mom, we want to ride our bikes to the park today. And the park that they wanted to go to, I think is about eight miles round trip to the park and back um, from our house. And they had planned out to get their checklist done super early so we could spend the rest of the morning doing that. Sometimes the bonus is even just FaceTiming with a friend that they haven't FaceTimed with for a while. So what we really wanted to communicate with the idea of bonuses is when you get your stuff done and mom and dad don't have to remind you, we can all spend our time doing things that we would much rather do. If we have had to remind you to do your chores all day or remind you to do your checklist, then when bedtime comes, we're really excited to get you in bed. But if you get up and with a cheerful attitude, you do your routines and you get it done, then we're happy to hang out for another 15 minutes in the evening or play a game or let you have a piece of gum or whatever it is. Now, my kids are four and seven, so if your kids are older, they may like different bonus ideas, but you can always ask them, hey, what would you like? What would be a cool bonus idea? That's something that's reasonable if you get your checklist done for the day. Now, sometimes we do a little bit bigger things, but those things are usually if Ross or I tells them beforehand, hey, the bonus option for today is going out to eat for example. And we make it very clear that this isn't an everyday bonus option. This is just a special occasion or maybe just because mom didn't feel like cooking that day or something like that. But you wanna make sure your bonuses are things that you can do on a daily basis. And I've also found it works much better if they can get their bonuses either immediately or sometime that same day. There have been times when our days were just way too busy and I wasn't able to do the bonus that day then it's difficult to motivate them to get another bonus the next day if they're thinking, well, I'll just get my bonus from yesterday and I don't need another one today. So it has been much better when I'm able to do the bonus that same day. And it's also helped me choose bonuses that I know I can give them that same day as well. So 
That's the big secret. That is how I get my kids to do their checklists without nagging and without them whining about it. And it has really changed the tone for doing chores in our house. And I hope it helps you out as well. If you do this and you have other bonus ideas, especially for older kids, please put those in the comments down below because I'm sure other moms would love to hear those as well. So now for those of you who have been curious, many people have asked in comments what my kids' checklists look like. I am going to go through and show you exactly what is on them. So this is my seven-year-old's checklist. And like I said, I put their name up top and I just try to make these kind of fun. This is what it looks like. It's the one that I have for sale with my autopilot workbook that you can get on my website if you choose, but you can easily do this with any piece of white paper yourself as well. So for her, in the morning routine, her first thing is to turn off the electro fan. My girls like to sleep with white noise and I figured since she's the older one, that can be one extra little thing that she does. So that isn't on my four-year-old's checklist. And then after that is brush teeth and drink water. And those both are on the same line for her just because I didn't have room if I separated them. And I figured they're related enough that she can do both of those things. Again, she's a little older. It's okay if there are a couple things that share a line. Then make bed, then get dressed, put pajamas away, clean room, devotions, memory verse, prayer. And again, those are on the same line, but very related and all part of the same thing that they would be doing. Then she needs to check her plants. She actually has a few different flowers that she has grown that my grandma has helped her with. And she needs to check if they need water or not. Then unload the dishwasher. And I put this little line here because this part of her checklist above the line is what she needs to do before breakfast. If she gets some of these things done that are below the line before breakfast, awesome. But typically this is about the amount of time that she has before breakfast to get things done. And I would say that amount of things typically takes her about 30 minutes, maybe sometimes a little more if she wants to read more for her devotions, but oftentimes it can even take less than that. Now, when we first started this, it was much, much longer. And you do wanna be prepared for that. When you first start, your kids are gonna drag their feet and push back and not want to do it. But the more they do it, the faster it will get. Then after breakfast, she helps clean up after breakfast and that involves sticking with me in the kitchen until breakfast is cleaned up. So she's not doing it by herself, but I just want to get her in the habit of as soon as the meal is over, we clean it together. Then she switches clothes from the washer to the dryer and then she does her morning chore. And the morning chores really vary throughout the week. Um, it's Monday at our house, so it's downstairs day, and she cleaned the downstairs bathroom for me today all by herself. And it kind of just depends on the day of the week what I ask her to do. I, I have thought about coming up with a weekly schedule so they know right away without having to ask me, but it really just depends on the week what I need them to do, and sometimes there are other things that they need. So I haven't done that yet, but um, you guys let me know in the comments if you would like to see a weekly routine for children's chores instead of just figuring it out daily. And then after that is her bonus. So you can see she didn't get her bonus yesterday on Sunday, and that is fairly typical for the kids on Sundays. Often we aren't at our house. Yesterday we were at my parents' house and she was playing with her cousins. So all she has to do on those days is get down to the devotions, memory verse, and prayer. And sometimes when we have company or we're at somebody's house, they do wanna get a bonus and they'll ask me, mom, can I get a bonus today? And I'll say, sure, if you do your checklist. So sometimes on Sundays they do, sometimes they don't. Sunday and Saturday are the only two days that those are optional though. Every other day they need to get their checklist completely done but they only get the bonus if I don't have to remind them or nag them about it. Now, her evening routine is, again, you can see yesterday, we were actually driving back home in the evening, so she only got to part of it, which is fine, especially for a Sunday, no big deal. But she folds clothes, so both of my girls fold all of their own clothes. I don't do that at all. When I'm separating out the laundry, I put 
the seven-year-olds in one pile and the four-year-olds in another pile and it's their responsibility to fold their clothes and put them away. Then she is to help make dinner. And again, that's not something that I am supposed to have to remind her about. She's just supposed to see me working and come and help do that. Help clean up after dinner and then put on pajamas, put clothes away, brush teeth, family worship, and go potty. Now for the four-year-old, you will see that this is slightly easier. So first thing she has to do is brush teeth, drink water, and again, since she's a little younger, those are on separate lines just to make that a little easier for her. Make bed, get dressed, put pajamas away, clean room, devotions, memory verse, prayer. She loads the washing machine. You'll notice the other one switched it, um, and that's because I found that that is harder to have to reach down. We have an old fashioned washer and dryer to have to reach down, get the clothes and switch those over. The four year old just couldn't reach it. So her job is to load it and start it in the morning before breakfast. And then she unloads silverware. So she still takes part in unloading the dishwasher, but it's not all her responsibility. And that is her line there that shows this is what she does before breakfast. And then after breakfast, her responsibility is just to put breakfast dish in the dishwasher. But I have noticed recently, since my older one is getting in the habit of helping clean up after breakfast, she will put her dish in the dishwasher and then generally stick around and help clean up as well. So I have found that pretty interesting. I'll be interested to see if that sticks. Then she does her morning chore. Now her morning chore today, again, this was downstairs day for us. Um, she vacuumed the hardwood floors, which is the easier part to vacuum and then I vacuumed the carpeted floors. Sometimes on Mondays she'll dust or things like that. So I try to adjust their morning chores for their ability level as well. And then I also have on hers put lunch dish and dishwasher. That's implied for my older one. I don't have it on her list, but for the younger one I did put it on here that the lunch dish also needs to go in the dishwasher for her to get her bonus. Now, evening routine for the four-year-old, fold your clothes. Again, she folds her own clothes. Help make dinner, put dinner dish in dishwasher, put on pajamas, clothes away, brush teeth, family worship, and go potty. So that is how we do it. Um, again, the two days that they don't have to get these done are Sunday and Saturday, like I've mentioned before, is a different day for us. But I do require them to do the first part of the checklist. So I expect every day that their bed is made, room is tidy, you know, things just put away, um, teeth brushed, things like that. But all through the weekdays, Monday through Friday, they do have to do the complete checklist to be eligible for a bonus. Now, the one hiccup I have found with the whole bonus thing is if they don't want a bonus, they don't think they need to do their checklist. That is not what I want to communicate. So I'm thinking about, in addition to the daily bonus, having a weekly bonus option of slightly bigger things that they can only get if all five days of the week are checked as well. So um, I'm in the works on that <laughs> to see how that will work. But at this point, we've just made it a rule. You have to get your checklist done one way or another. And if I have to remind you, you don't get the bonus. You still got to do the checklist. So if you do it yourself, it's a win-win for all of us. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. I would love to hear in the comments down below if this helped you get your kids to do their chores more independently. And please subscribe down below if you haven't already done so because I would love to see you on the next video.